for the ATH DWX9, they should have focused on the audio rather than the Technica. Goedendag, we're the HRME. Don't have regrettable musical experiences. The first thing that strikes you about these earbuds is the unique soft texture and stylish shape of the case. The soft touch reminds us a little of the Jabra Active series, but it's otherwise quite unique. The subtle Audio Technica logo and those five fancy LED lights make quite the first impression. The shape of this case reminds us of the clear scene speaker we've reviewed on this channel. And my wife said, it reminded her of a lady's purse. Unfortunately, this purse probably needs another purse rather than a pocket since it's a bit chunky at the thickest end. The materials do make us wonder how this case will age or deal with the elements. Hey Kevin, why don't we throw a bunch of dust on this case? Yes, we know this thing costs 300 bucks. Well, that was better than expected. In the box, you get 12 different sizes of tips. No, not 12 tips for width, but different widths and different lengths for the right levels of audio immersion via insertion. We like the attention to detail, and this is rather unique. After the box and case come the buds, and these buds, there's something extremely appealing about them, flaunting a glossy yet understated design in this particular black variant we've got. They also boast something we've only seen on the status between 3A and C, a real life pressable button and a touch surface. And as if that's not enough, you can change how sensitive that touch surface is. We found medium work best for us. And after fitting it in the ears, if you want to get fit and then fit into those new clothes, you can work out in these. These buds will resist some sweat at IPX4. Maybe just don't throw dust at them? Where the old world audio companies or audiophile companies usually fail is getting the basics right with true wireless earbuds. So things like performance, customizability, and extra features. Let's start with the Connect app because it deserves more than just a passing mention. Man, have Audio Technica got their app situation right. Who's their software provider and how do we get our apps developed by them? The apps let you do anything you want. Do the earbuds. Every touch and press is customizable on the earbuds. The advantage of having a button and a touch control surface on each of the buds is that you basically get twice as many options to control your audio. I mean, there are only so many things you can do with audio, whether it's volume control, ANC control, media control, call controls, the options are out of control. What's a bit lame about this app is that it kind of ties to one phone. So if you're using two phones, you can use the app only on one phone and you get this error message instead. I suppose Audio Technica is trying to preempt any connectivity issues. And this is only a problem if you forget that first device at home. But I actually did that and I basically could not access the app anymore. And except for a hearing test, there isn't a single smart feature we think these buds are missing. An in-ear sensor for playing and pausing music, all the assistance your heart could desire. Note that the box mentions Alexa only, but Audio Technica has released a firmware update to include Google's Assistant as well. With Snapdragon Sound, you also get a bunch of free goodies like a low latency mode. You can also change the balance of the earbuds if your left and right ear aren't equally capable. You get battery levels off the case and each earbud. You get to see exactly which codec is active. You also get a reliable multipoint feature with simultaneous connection to up up to two devices and a full device list in the app. You can use this list to connect and disconnect from a device or pair to a new device too. To go a step further, you can also choose if one of these devices is not used for media or calls. These buds are also really comfortable for us using the default tips, but we'd bet that these would be comfortable for you too, especially given the relatively small nozzle size and large collection of tips in the box. We did feel after a while that we needed a break because the seal was really good. Here, let's do a banana test. Here are some microphone samples to see how these do on phone calls. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. 
one, two, three. All right, the tests are one thing and you can take a listen to the longer samples as a YouTube member or patron. But what we really notice is that higher pitch sounds are a big problem. I remember I was chewing tomatoes when we were on a call and Rowan said it sounded like someone using a hacksaw to saw through bone. And when I used a paper bag, I got told off by someone I was speaking to about it being too loud. In quiet conditions, these are perfectly usable, but overall the volume of my voice was like half the volume of something like the Techniques AZ-80. Back to the test. You could hear the background noises like those whooshing cars, but the mic still picked up Rohan's voice. In windy conditions, you're taking a gamble. There were no high-pitched sounds in the samples, but like we said, those are a nightmare. But these buds are a fuckman's dream. You can configure these buds to control volume, mute, and the ability to change ANC modes. Oh, and you get side tone too, so you can hear your own voice when speaking instead of feeling like you're hearing it through your skull. What about preventing noises getting into your skull? Well, we'll start with the downer. Switching between ANC and transparency modes takes a good three and a half seconds. Yes, we measured it with your audio pausing for that length of time. It wouldn't have been a big deal, but even El Cheapo buds from like three years ago could do this better. And that ANC for the ATH TWX9, they should have focused on the audio rather than the Technica. First off, they've tried to do too much, but it almost feels like they're compensating for something because they couldn't get the basics right. Let us explain. Instead of a mild, moderate, strong setting or a slider, you get a bunch of different profiles that you manually have to choose from for noise cancelling. So things like airplane, office, home and an optimized setting. It's not clear which ones are doing what. Now you'd think that optimized, you know, would be the simplest. Uh, it would optimize for the situation you're in, what other buds call adapt or smart ANC, but you would be wrong. You optimize by running a calibration that takes a good 17 seconds of your valuable life. And don't you dare change location because you've optimized for one place and one type of condition. So for example, if you've optimized when you're at home, that same optimization will be used when you're in a crowded street. We can see why they didn't call it smart. It's all quite dumb. And remember we said they should have focused on the audio rather than the Technica? Well, the performance of the ANC itself is quite middle of the road. We put it at tier C, which ain't great if you want to eliminate the most sound. And the transparency fares a bit better at tier B. You get five levels of transparency and thankfully you don't have to wait four seconds to switch between them. But we found that although the levels were okay, the quality of the sound being let in was very muffled and missed the sparkle to give you that sense of not wearing earbuds at all. Also, these might be the only buds here that don't have quick charging. You get USB Type-C and wireless charging, which is nice. And while on charging, the battery life, it's... We got a measly five hours and 14 minutes with ANC on our brand new unit, as opposed to the advertised six hours. That degradation ain't gonna look too good over time. You'll get just about two additional charges from the case. You know, with audio being the first thing in your brand name, you better make sure your Technica is up to it. And on paper, yes, the Agata Wiz 9 covers all the basics. You get SBC, AAC, APTX, and APTX Adaptive. So you're covered on most devices. And not only inspiration from Sony's brand name strategy, Audio-Technica also uses Sony's 360 Audio-Tech. Not Sony's LDAC though. Hmm. One of the best things we like about these buds is that you can change how granular your volume control is. We don't understand why audiophiles talk about little peaks and dips in the frequency response, but not fine-grained volume control. That killer Audio-Technica app can configure the volume control range between 16, 32, and 64 steps. The only catch, you're gonna have to do it from the buds or the app itself. Using volume keys on your phone will still use the system volume jumps. And when it comes to sound, well, we said these are pretty good, but there are a couple of buts. The stock tuning is actually two tunings, one with ANC off and one with ANC enabled. Enabling ANC gives you a bit of a V-shape and going to off gives you a bit of a flat shape. Overall, as you'd expect from Audio Technica, these buds sound pretty great. For me, I had to boost the treble a bit, starting with the EQ treble boost, and that sounded lovely to my ears. John Mayer's Gravity, for example, sounded fantastic, especially John's voice and opening licks are on point. The timbre's on point as well. There's no weird metallic element to his voice. If anything, I think these lack a little bit of sub bass, and while the treble isn't a planar kind of treble, I find that it can go far enough without breaking down into a fizzy mess using the EQ. At lower volumes, it doesn't really 
stand out in terms of sound. So there is some work that they could do there. And we won't put it in tier S for sound generally because of the slight edge it loses with sub bass. But other than that, there's really not much we can fault about these buds for sound. An easy tier A. In terms of sustainability, Audio-Technica as a company does have policies around its processes. The box mentions reduced plastic packaging and you do notice a lot of paper being used. But other than that, we couldn't really find anything specific about these buds in terms of sustainability or repairability. If you do know anything, let us know in the comments down below. So who's the Audio-Technica ATH-TWX94? for the Audio-Technica files. Someone looking for unique but subtle looking buds that sound great and can be customized till the cows come home. But are they really worth all that money? Well, depends. What do you really value? To see how these stack up to other premium buds, stay subscribed. We have a video coming up on that very soon. And thanks to our YouTube members and patrons that help us afford expensive true wireless earbuds like these. Buying these products costs us a lot of money and as a policy, we don't accept money from brands whose products we review. So thank you for being our real sponsors. You've been a TWX9. Bless you TWX9. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste. Clear scene.